team keep it clean no more freelancing in the building it's done it's official appreciate y'all so much man <laughs> thank y'all man for real thank you for supporting thank you for rocking with us thank you for everything um i guess the ravens were like you know what you you want to be over here celebrating that you're not a freelancer no more you want to celebrate getting your monetization but you know what celebrate this you've been talking about wide receivers for the longest celebrate nelson Aguilar. And the Ravens signed Nelson Aguilar to a one-year, $6.25 million deal. Now, um, if, I, I'm, I'm not opposed to the signing. I don't have a problem with it as long as this is not it. As long as this is not the only signing. When we, when we talked about Nelson Aguilar when the Ravens had him on a visit, got no problem with them bringing him in. I got no problem with him coming along because he is a, an improvement over the Ravens wide receivers and the Ravens have said hey we're gonna revamp we're gonna redo this wide receiver room okay this is part of it but this can't be the only part of it this is not the solution this is not the final move at that position it can't be even if the Ravens went about this thing like all right Nelson Aguilar Rashad Bateman and we'll even draft some I still wouldn't even think that should be enough in my opinion but when you think about it it's like what are they gonna do what else are they gonna do at the position besides the draft obviously we, well I, I, you know what I take that back i can't say obviously because last year i would have thought they obviously would have signed somebody when they or drafted somebody when they uh got rid of hollywood but they didn't so i feel like this and they were, they, it's been said that they were in the running for DeAndre Hopkins. Well, interested in DeAndre Hopkins, not necessarily in the running for him. But y'all almost feel like this removes them, I guess. Um, so, again, while I'm not opposed to this signing, it does scare me. And it worries me for potentially what else the Ravens could do or really potentially what the Ravens could not do uh, at the wide receiver position. Uh, if they were to sign um, Nelson Aguilar, which they obviously have, I thought that it would be like a one-year, $2.5 million deal max with like a mil in incentive. So like 1.5 mil guarantee, something like that. And not that this is a crazy deal, but I didn't think it was going to be that much. Like it's a $6.25 million deal. Uh, it's really a one-year, $3.25 million deal, but it has three mil additional in incentives. So... Yes. Okay. Cool. Um, I am uh not surprised that they signed him. That's not the surprise. Uh, but now I'm just wondering, like, all right, what's gonna be next? What are they gonna do? Like we talked about before with Nelson Aguilar. I know. Um, initially, immediately, right when all Ravens fans, well, probably like ninety nine percent of Ravens fans, saw that they were bringing in Nelson Aguilar for a visit. So many people's mind. The same thing played through so many people's mind. Oh, drops, drops, drops. Because the show played through mine. Because that's, that's the first thing I thought of. I said, oh, 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 boy, here we go. But then what we did, like y'all remember in the video uh, about him visiting, we went through the drops. And we saw the last two years combined, last two, 2022 season and 2021 season combined, he had three drops. Combined. And, and one of the years he had one drop and another one he had two. So combined the last two years, three drops. Now, his production, it went down. He wasn't getting as many targets, wasn't getting as many catches as in years prior. So, I mean, got to take that for what it is. But um, with Nelson Aguilar, we would have to hope that he, um, with whatever his volume is, uh, this upcoming season and it's going it's to be one of those things that we won't know till we know because right now Ravens current receivers uh, and you got to think like the number one receiver would be Bateman okay the number two as of right now would be Nelson Aguilar would be Nelson Aguilar number three uh, Devin DuVernay four Proche Wallace and that's that's it so that is your current Ravens receiver room I would still expect it to change but again, it's one of those things we won't officially know till we know. But um, you got to hope that if, well, for whatever his volume is, whatever his production is, that 
the drops, <laughs> you gotta hope that they go away. Because that's something that we had linked. And and it's not like some super crazy discovery by us or by anything. No. It's I mean that goes hand in hand. If somebody got drop issues or whatnot, if they have a higher volume of targets and catches and passes thrown their way, then yeah, that increases the the chances that they have to, to drop the football. That's, that happens. We've seen it before. But um my thing is obviously we don't want any drops, but if he can make some plays, which he can. He, he can be explosive. He can be a playmaker, in which Ravens, you can never have enough of those. If he can do that and that can outweigh the drops, because the drops are going to happen. Drops happen for just about everybody. Just about every receiver drops the ball sometimes. <laughs> Some more frequently than others, but every receiver drops it sometimes. But we just got to hope that the drops, <laughs> they disappear. Even if he increases, his volume increases, we got to hope that they disappear. I said, and then hope that the, the the playmaking continues and the playmaking increases, and because again, with with him, he he's he's valuable in a couple different ways. He can be a receiver, obviously, but he can also be a returner too. Um, and not that they would remove that responsibility away from Devin Duvernay. And then we'll see what happens with Devin Duvernay, whether they sign him to a contract extension. Because you gotta feel you you gotta feel like they're gonna do something with that cap number, whether they sign him to an extension, or. We'll see. And, and I wonder, too, if um, depending on what happens with Devin DuVernay, if the Ravens could be looking at Nelson Aguilar like, all right, if, if this is just me thinking out loud. Not, we didn't hear anything about this. So I don't want anybody to be, oh, man, well, he's going to no. This is just me thinking out loud. If they felt like, you know what, we're going to trade Devin DuVernay. He, he just, his cap hit is too much. And we want to get something rather than get nothing for him if they don't plan on re-signing him. Or, but if they trade him, they could be like, all right, well, Nelson Aguilar, he'll just be our returner now. And we got him at a one-year, $3.25 million deal. It can go up to six, but it's most likely to, the, he's not going to hit six mil. Because that's the way that team structure these deals to where with, when it comes to incentives, yeah, hey, you got these bright incentives in front of you. You got these pretty incentives in front of you. But we know most likely you're not going to hit those incentives. It makes the deal look better, but you're probably not going to hit them. Um, so with Nelson Aguilar, it's like they, they could be like, all right, we got him at a one-year $3.25 million deal. Devin DuVernay's cap hit alone is like four, four million change. And they may be like, you know what? Bye. And again, that's just me thinking out loud on possibilities. And then, of course, they, they could end up signing him to a contract extension. It's, it's, so, it's different things that could happen. It's, it's still so many different possibilities. We are still not necessarily so early in the offseason. But it's still kind of early in the offseason, so we can't rule anything out, especially since it's, it's, we ain't even get to the draft yet. The draft is still, we still got a month before it's draft time. So anything could happen. Oh. <laughs> Look at them Ravens, boy, I tell you, man. I, I, I tell you, they, they, they always up to something. But again, I'm, I'm not mad at this move. Again, I, I don't think anybody should be mad at it. I can understand the frustration, but... Hey, Ravens signed the outside. They signed the outside player. This is the first one. This is the first outside player that they brought to the Ravens. So there we go. Hey, they, they moving. The Ravens moving. But um, this cannot be it at wide receiver. This cannot be the end all be all for the Baltimore Ravens at wide receiver. Um, even if they drafted somebody, I don't feel like they. I don't feel like their receiver room, the experience in their wide receiver room, especially if you're trying to really compete for a Super Bowl. I'm not saying you can't do it. But I don't feel like the only experience in their receiver room should be Rashad Bateman and Nelson Aguilar. Nothing against those two, because they both can make some plays. Obviously, we've seen it over the years. But I just feel like it should be more. But I just wonder if it will be more. Right now, before today, I mean, well, before this move, the Ravens had, I think, a little less than seven mil in cap space. Like, a little less than seven mil. So... I, that's why I like I would say that I would hope that this wouldn't be the only move But at the same time What can we really expect Because Ravens like Obviously with the cap space We all talk about how the cap is cap With the cap it's, it's all about how you work it And But the Ravens are not one of those teams To do a bunch of crazy stuff with the cap. We know it's a lot of teams that they could have like a tiny bit in cap space, but they still making all these moves. We see it every year, but Ravens have not been one of those teams to do that. So that's why with their cap space, with it being low and with them being how they've been, 
I can't expect him to go crazy with this, that, and the third. I can't expect him to be doing other, da, 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 da. So that's why this this move it, it like this move itself doesn't concern me, but the fact that they don't have much cap space and they're not a team that likes to go through all the loopholes and stuff when it comes to the cap, that concerns me because this could be like, all right, we're done. So obviously a lot depends on the Lamar Jackson contract situation. Who knows which way that's gonna go? It's like I feel like we we don't nobody has any clear direction on how that thing is going. Well, except EDC and the Ravens and, and Lamar. But it's like we just whew, these Ravens stay busy, don't they? Anyway, team keep it clean. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. And mm, like Nelson Aguilar told the rest of free agency. I'm out.